Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to Who's the Most Black? Strangers Take DNA Tests by Jubilee. This is gonna be a very different video than what I typically react to, other than the fact that it does have DNA testing with it. I am very familiar with Jubilee, which does a lot of content that kind of really pushes the boundary of the conversation about culture and race and all these different things. And so I think the interesting thing for me will be trying to focus on the ancestral aspect versus the cultural aspect, because what's happening with this is a collision, I think, of two different thoughts where, you know, in a lot of my videos, I talk about how when it comes to DNA testing, I really hate using terminology like white and black because it's so vague and it cuts out so much of the nuance of the world, which is what these DNA tests are focusing on. Trying to come at it from that point of view doesn't work when you're talking about ancestry and these DNA tests and figuring out that kind of stuff. But this being Jubilee and the way that this is posed, I think this is focusing a lot on the idea of culturally black. So that's gonna be very interesting because that's very different than just having African ancestry. But one thing I am going to try to do is once they go and meet everybody, I'm hoping they're going to kind of talk a little bit about maybe their family history and we'll kind of get a guess of what we think the DNA test results will be for everyone. Now, I don't know if they show full results or if they're just going to say you're this much African or probably they'll say you're this percentage black, uh, which once again, when it comes to these DNA tests, I don't like using that term because it cuts out the nuance. But something I've said in a lot of my videos where we've seen people who have African ancestry taking DNA tests with most African Americans or what I'm guessing is going to be the majority of the uh, people there, basically people who are coming from ancestry that traces to enslaved ancestors in the United States. But knowing the reach of Jubilee, I'm not going to be surprised if we see maybe more Afro-Latino or Afro-Caribbean or some sort of other variation than just African-American, which would change what we expect with the DNA results. But with all that said, let's jump into the video. If you had to rank yourself against others based on a specific trait, what would it say about how you see them and how they see you? To find out, we brought together seven people and had them rank each other based on perceived blackness. Then we had them complete a DNA test so we could compare the results. This is ranking. See, already we're getting way away from kind of the ancestral aspect and more kind of focused seemingly on the cultural aspect. Guessing they may kind of focus more on that than the ancestral aspect, which is what we want to focus on. What makes someone black? Being black is just you identifying yourself as a black person and realizing that you do have plights and experiences that can sometimes make life harder for you. I think someone who is darker in general is going to have a different experience than someone who's light skinned and that's going to constitute how they walk through the world and their blackness. Already from this conversation, this focus is not about the ancestral aspect and just about the cultural aspect. And for a lot of the people watching this video who aren't familiar with me, the reason I keep bringing this up is because, like I said, we're focusing on the ancestral aspect. The DNA tests are just looking at DNA comparing it against these population groups that they've defined and seeing what of your DNA correlates to these defined population groups. And so when we're looking at black, well, what's going to be defined as black? Are we going to find all Africa or is that going to be nuanced? Because a lot of people would say that a large majority of North Africa isn't really what they would think of as black. They would think of it more as brown in a sense. But then at the same time, I wonder if they're going to show all of the results, how are they going to take any sort of results outside of what would be defined as white and black and basically what kind of falls into that brown category. So people from the Middle East, people from areas of Asia, and especially considering that it's not uncommon for people who are African-American to have Native American ancestry. I wonder how they're gonna work that in, but I, I'm guessing that the way Jubilee is going to define it is specifically Africa. I, I don't know if they're gonna tell us in here of, you know, we're gonna choose this or not. And then one other question which I didn't bring up is what DNA test did they go with? Because there may be some DNA tests that are going to give you a variation of what your results are. 
So like living DNA is the test that gives the most nuanced African results. But then you have other tests like MyHeritage, which are known by a lot of people to not have as great of results, at least in terms of the admixture being off from what they know of their family ancestry. All right, I'm gonna stop rambling. Let's jump back into the video. In fact, how you see yourself, but it does reflect how, like, how the world. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I know for a fact there are experiences that I'm never going to experience because I am lighter. That's something that I've acknowledged my whole life. But also having a mother who is much darker, you know, we go out in public and I see how they treat her. And I feel, you know, the same rage, but I know that I'll never experience it myself. Especially well, for me being down in Orange County, um, where it's predominantly white people. When it comes to white people, it's more like, okay, you're one of us. But there's a little inklings of um, darker skinned people who will look at me and kind of tell like, okay, you're not just white, you're mixed with something. Yeah. Mm. My mom's side, uh, they always make fun of me. You sound like a white person. Uh, I don't use African American vernacular. Not that that is what makes a black person. Um, you can be very well spoken. I feel like I just like switch it up. Like if I'm around, you know, black people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, my white people are like, oh hey, how are you? Like I speak differently for sure, 100%. Coast switching. Coast switching. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so coastal change up to me. Being around some white crowds, like, I definitely feel like I had to, you know, reserve parts of myself just because I felt like I was being judged. Like, they could clearly tell you're not, like, just white. And I think that's why I've stayed so far away from being around white people and why I do kind of have, you know, that kind of, like, I don't really know you like that, like, mm, you know? See, I think a really interesting thing of what they're discussing is really an American view of all of this and i'm just bringing this up because i know i have a large international audience all over the world and not just like you know a big english audience or big in australia or anything like that i have so many people in you know every country it feels like i'm getting comments all the time of people from everywhere and a lot of times when i do reactions to videos that talk about kind of blackness and whiteness and all that those videos are usually more of an American-centric view of things. And so I will see a lot of comments about that, even saying, you know, oh, you know, it's so interesting seeing how Americans think, whereas, you know, where we live, it's not really thought of like that. But I think that kind of makes sense because the whole black and white thing really comes from the history of America and most especially the history of slavery in America. Let's continue. I fully expect to be at the end of the line. Me, me too. <laughs> yeah. See, I think that's going to be the interesting thing with how they choose it is they're probably going to go by skin color. But in my experience, and as we know through DNA testing, phenotype does not always equal genotype. What that means is that the way that you look doesn't fully represent your actual DNA. So you could have people that are much lighter skin that end up having a much higher percentage of African ancestry or what they'll probably call black. But sometimes it doesn't really happen that way. And I've seen a lot of times where people who are lighter skinned get really high readings. And the common reading for people with African-American ancestry, I feel like it's usually about 10 to 20%. You usually hear numbers around there, 10 to 20%, 15 to 25% European. And then usually about 75% to 90% African. It feels like back when I started doing genetic genealogy in 2013, the consensus was that it was usually about 25 or 30% European, 75, 70% African, but then as time has gone on, the African percentage on average seems to goes up and the European comes down. So now it's that kind of 10 to 20, 10 to 25 ish or so percentage. So my guess is, is that we're going to see a range of that. And I think it will be interesting to see with some of the, the people that are lighter skin, especially if they have a parent who is black and a parent who is white, then they're going to have probably 50% or less of African ancestry. Unfortunately, we haven't really heard much or anything about anyone's family or their family history, so we don't really know what kind of to expect with each of them. Hopefully they tell a bit more about their ancestry and then we can kind of gauge it. I definitely came into it looking at the physical features first. I'm gonna make my way down here. Okay. I think I'll switch with you. Actually, come on. Oh, no. I might switch y'all too. Okay. No, no, I might switch y'all too. Y'all too. Yeah. <laughs> the three of us, we we have one white parent, one black parent, right? Or Both my parents are black. Both your parents are black. Okay. okay. That's a great question because immediately we know 
one white parent, one black parent, that means that we're most likely, as I said, looking at less than 50%. And even more likely, we're looking at somewhere in the 40 percentile. Because remember, if on average, we're seeing African ancestry being about, you know, 80 to 90% or so, then if it's only one black parent, that means that you're going to half that. And so that's more of like 45 to 47.5%. But it also wouldn't be uh, unsurprising to see them get over 50% African, which could mean that their white parent may have African ancestry, but it could also just be the complications of these tests and reading DNA and that kind of stuff. So let's continue. Happened to be the two light bikes that got together, you know. I did think of him like, oh, he's biracial. And then he said he had two black parents and I was like, huh. She and I, I kind of want to switch <laughs> between us. Okay, um, but hear me out. <laughs> I feel like hair is also a big part in that, you know? And my hair is very white. Like, I have white texture hair, like the thin, straight, like there's no nothing to my hair. I see what you mean, because usually if I straighten my hair, the texture just does change a little, and then I appear to be more um, Caucasian. What are we ranking it off right now? Looks? Yeah, are like, we going it, off looks? Is it based right? on that? I so. I was wondering, I was wondering, wondering if it looks, I would put myself. But like, I feel like I'm one more. I feel like I'm like one or two, no cap. Really? Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm black, bro, for real. <laughs> like, I'm black for real. It don't look like my story. God, I'm black. I mean, as far back as I can go, bro, it's black. Yes, like, no, same. Ain't same. 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 Ain't nothing new. Yeah. Like, the reason why I feel like I'm here is because my mom and dad are both Eritrean, so like, I know where we, you know, where we stem back from. So I feel like that's why I feel like I can be here. That brings in that question I was talking about before. What? readings are they going to consider as black now i think eritrean ethiopian kenyan eastern african that's definitely going to be considered black but i definitely think there's going to be a question with northern africa and it's very common for them to get readings from that northeast sort of corridor of africa including the Arabian Peninsula, and even getting into the Middle East. So are they going to count any of that or not? How are they going to count it? And the other thing to consider is this, this test that they're doing, it's very possible that in five years, with all of the updates and new studies that are done, they redo this and all of a sudden they're all reordered. Because DNA tests, these percentages are estimations. And there's a lot of issues that can happen in reading this stuff. And not only reading the DNA, but first reading the DNA and then deciphering it and trying to figure out where it connects and a lot of stuff. So let's continue. I was more sure about my, my DNA than the rest of them, I think. I feel like I'm right here on the low. I feel like I'm where you should be. Really? I, why? Tell me why. Because, bro, like, I don't know. I, just, I have a feeling. You have the feeling? Okay. <laughs> I disagree with that feeling. It's only what? based off, you know, like literally just based off skin. I don't know what else I'd rank it off of right now. I feel like co eye color. You look oh, like, yeah, you I have light eyes. Yeah, light I have very light eyes. eyes. Like My eyes are I'm black as a night sky. No explanation of that. That's what I'm saying. Sandy Come on. There gotta be some, some <laughs> drop in there. It's bro. so deep in there, though, that There's we can't trace. There, like, what do you have that he doesn't have? Yeah. Well, I got the same hair texture you, the same braids, but same hair texture. Eyes dark as hell. I was low key, <laughs> slightly gaslighting to try to be second. So I was stuck by his colored eyes. Everything, like, I'll it's me, bro. I'll let you take yeah, it. bro, bro. I would like, go one, 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 two, three. Three? Four. Right. I would four. Four. I would you four. All right. Okay. Why'd you put yourself in the middle? So you could get a good That's a good question. Wait, 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 wait. He's been quiet this whole time. Yeah, I was gonna ask, why are you putting yourself in the middle? I told you, I wanted a good shot of myself. I just did. They try to put you in the middle. That's uh, what it is. They try to put you in the middle. Yeah, but it's cool. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't I don't think she's in the middle. I don't think she's in the middle for sure. So he in the middle. Bro, I honestly, think you're in the middle, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. No, let's switch. 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 It's a confidence, confidence as well. Yeah. The confidence. Yeah. She go where she at. Yeah, I agree. The confidence is very convincing. We're on black. Yeah. yeah. And. <laughs> But like, yeah, I've definitely encountered a lot of black people who are 100% black with very fair skin. So it's like, it's not like it's impossible, you know? Like people say like, oh no, we're not based on our skin color, that's outdated. But you saw what they were like, bro. They were trying to put me in the middle. I think we should do some cultural like stuff. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Some experiences. experiences. Okay. If that's the case, then I'm not here. I can't be here. Wait, experience cult. See, it's really funny because just like I was saying, cultural versus ancestral. They're talking about culturally black and she just immediately says, 
well, I can't be here if we're talking culture because she, I guess, I'm guessing that she's kind of referencing the Eritrean thing, but let, let's see what she, she has to say. Yeah, oh, yeah, I got see, you see what I'm saying? But yeah. that's a part of blackness. I, I, I don't mean, like, genetically blackness. Yeah, it still does. Yeah. Your experience? Yeah, 100%. How? Cool. See, yeah, see, I'm I'm with her. I, 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 I didn't quite understand what he was saying at first. I, I misunderstood it, but I, it, your experience, your, you know, that has nothing to do with the genetics. The genetics are just about the DNA that you have. And I guess even more specifically with these DNA tests, it's about the way these companies are analyzing your DNA and then comparing it to these defined population groups they have, which as they do more studies, they're going to redefine the population groups because the studies may show them, oh, you know that DNA that you thought was Central African? Actually, we found out that it's Southeast African or maybe even something where they find it as North African instead, where they thought, you know, oh, yeah, this is uh, Liberian. And then, oh, no, actually, this is more Libyan or from Tunisia or Morocco or something. And so then that question again comes in of how are they defining black with the African results? Is North Africa considered part of that or not and this uh conversation they're having right now is kind of the where these two heads are budding of genetics culture and you know there's a tie between them because obviously i think you know blackness is tied to african ancestry but then the cultural aspect of it is it's correlated i guess in a way so it's you know it's it's an interesting balance talking about ancestry and then culturalness in terms of black and white. Because I, I could have been raised in some random city, every single white person ever, and be completely different. It's this environment. Which like, I don't think it matters. Because, yeah. I mean, we spit in a little thing. Like, that has nothing to do with what we do. <laughs> I'm so serious. But I'm, I'm you're so right. serious. No, you're right. 100%. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. Yeah, but then the dilemma is, like, we don't know each other's genes. We only no. know ours. Yeah. So we have to base it off of something that we can all agree on. Yeah. Ancestry. <laughs> Experience shapes our blackness, how it's seen by the rest of the world. Regardless, right. like your DNA can say one right. thing, but how you yeah. experience and go through the world is kind of different. And I think that's a really great point. It can be very difficult for some people to watch my videos and reactions and separate this idea of culturally black with this ancestral idea. They both exist. They're both connected. But it's a very difficult dance to you know difficult topic to talk about sometimes because. There's just so much going on with it. I have a question to define your blackness. Do y'all keep plastic bags? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Ye
there's eight great grandparents. So that means that it'd be the equivalent of one grandparent. So with that in mind, that means that for him, we're probably looking at at least 25% European, but more than likely he's getting 25% European through his white great grandparents. But then he's also going to be getting a small percentage of European through his African-American ancestry, just like most African-Americans do. And this ties to two different things that happen in history. Number one is the way that I think most people really relate to why African-Americans have European ancestry. And that was that the families who held slaves would rape their slaves and thus they would have children with them and those children would carry those European genes. So that's a big reason. The second reason, though, is that there were consensual relationships, both before emancipation and after emancipation. So those both do represent that European ancestry with most African-Americans. Now, the interesting thing when it comes to DNA testing with that idea is that when you have someone who has a known closer European ancestor, so, you know, the, the main one being, you know, if you had a parent who is white and a parent who is black then you're probably looking at under 50% African and over 50% European. But then if you have one grandparent, then it's dropping down to, you know, 25% and 75%. But basically what happens is, is that sometimes when you see these higher percentages of European, it can be indicative that your European ancestry or some of your European ancestry came into the family after emancipation. But the fact that we're talking about a grandparent for him, because he said two great grandparents, so it's the equivalent of a grandparent. So I don't think that's gonna change a whole lot necessarily, but it may put him further down the line. I think they were mostly going off the fact of that, you know, he, he has the skin tone, he seems very culturally black in terms of the American view of black. And so I, I think that's kind of a big reason, but he may be further down the line. All right, let's continue. Okay, wait a second. And, and so my great grandparents are black. black. No way. I have a great grandmother who's alive and black. Like, she's a black woman. Oh, no, no, no. Like, her name is Karen for real. They were talking about the brown sugar, kind of put me in the middle. And the homeboy great grandparents not even full black. Like, that's no, we gotta say. change. We gotta change. There's eight great grandparents. Everybody has eight great grandparents so it's not like this like oh well, i have a gra grandparent who's black that doesn't mean that you don't have one that's white and in fact from my experience with most people in america most people in america don't know all of their great grandparents in fact i'd say most people in america rarely know even four of them so it's very possible that some of them may have a great grandparent who is white or multiple great grandparents who are white and they didn't know and the DNA test may, might give us an idea if that's the case for any of them. Some has to change, I think. Look. My great grandparents are both black. Both, both sides. I think y'all should switch. Yeah. Jocelyn, go ahead. Yeah. I look at y'all facing on my skin color. No. Oh, wait. No. It's your. If you're yeah, young, you you're younger, what about your grandparents? Yeah, there you go. Back to Hollywood, right? Based on my skin color, I'm sure they didn't have any indication that I might have white in my DNA. I think this right They all do. <laughs> I think this is the closest. The, the only one who might not is the girl who's from Eritrea. Otherwise, I think all of them are going to get European. And even so, I wouldn't be surprised if the girl from Eritrea gets small percentages of European. Very likely, if that does happen, it'd probably be some sort of a Mediterranean connection or Eastern European connection because, you know, just thinking about Eritrea, Ethiopia, you know, Eastern Africa, getting right into the, uh, you know, Arabian Peninsula, right into the Mediterranean. And so there are some of those kind of ties. <laughs> Results did not come in again. Okay, perfect. Oh, Others. Wow. <laughs> so we're not gonna know. I'm gonna call out the order of the people I do have. So Jonathan, 89.6. Ooh, that's high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have black. <laughs> that's high. Yeah. So colored eyes do not matter at all, because that boy black. <laughs> and then Wayne, 67 percent. Wow. So that makes a lot of sense. We have a grandparent who presumably is fully European, fully white. And so that would be about 25%. And then we have that additional, what seems to be about 13% or so that is not African at least, or at least how they're defining it as black, which 
They're not showing us a, a multitude of what regions they're getting or breaking it down at all. They're just saying you're this percentage black, which is a really bad way to read DNA tests. Obviously it makes sense with this concept of a video. It's just about the ancestry and even more, like I've said multiple times, not even the ancestry, but just these defined population groups that they have of DNA. So, all right, let's keep going. And then Steve, 56.5%. That doesn't mean right next to me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so 20.2% would be basically a grandparent who's African American. So that would mean that either her parent, who's the black parent, is either half black themselves, or maybe both of their parents are a, a, a large mix as well. But with the girl right before her getting the, what was that, 39.3%. That makes a lot of sense with, like I said, in terms of having one parent who is white, fully European, one parent who is black, who's going to have mostly African, but will still have European ancestry. And so that's how that's coming in. So if her parent who was fully black were to test, my guess is, is that parent would probably get kind of a typical 80 something percent reading of African, that is. All right, let's continue. 39.3%. It's giving very, I'm rocking with Mark because Mark rocking with us, you know? <laughs> you are freaking African Americans plus Mark. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which I'm rocking with Mark because Mark is rocking with us. Not Mark rocking with us, bro. <laughs> You're going to be like 90. Mm -hmm. 100. 95. I'm going to say 98, actually, just in case. You said 89 and then 67, right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good 20-something percent. You can... I think how hurt the Eritrean girl's readings are going to come down is what they define as black. Like I've said over and over and over, are they defining North Africa? Are they defining Egypt? With knowing how these DNA tests are and the issues with them in terms of these percentage calculators, which I should say at this point, I've been talking a lot about the admixture percentages and all that stuff with these tests. That's the worst part of the test. The DNA matches are the best part. Everyone focusing on the percentages and all of that, it's not very useful. It's basically kind of a fun little toy that might give a little bit of a hint as to what might be going on to your ancestry, but a very blurry, very, very blurry image of your ancestry. And only doing your genealogy is going to help you understand your ancestry and learn about it truly. But with these DNA tests, you can use your DNA matches to expand your genealogy and identify ancestors. And I've used DNA tests like these to help adoptees find their families, identify unknown remains, solve crimes, and do all sorts of other stuff with these DNA tests. And it's through the matches. The admixtures played maybe a 0.2% into that very very minimal they just give us hints like with the the one girl that got uh here, let's Carly, 67. so or not the one girl so with the one guy that got 56.5 percent so it's very likely that he's going to have one parent who has a very very high percentage of european and the other parent who's also going to have a pretty high percentage of european because he said both of his parents are black but even more that could be indicative of a much more recent fully european ancestor so he may have a couple of great grandparents who are fully white or maybe even something more than that or maybe even one of his grandparents is white you know one thing a lot of people don't consider is that sometimes the ancestors you ha think are your ancestors aren't truly your ancestors. It's what we in genealogy call an NPE, not parent expected. And it happens all the time. People will take a DNA test with their sibling and all of a sudden their sibling comes up and then it's like, oh, they're only a half sibling. What does that mean? It means one of your parents isn't truly one of the parents and then it's somebody else. And so it's always possible that could happen in, in their family too. And so, you know, who he thought might've been grandpa on one side, may have been somebody else and that person maybe he was white and then he has a fully white grandparent has no clue so there's a lot of nuance with this kind of stuff and this is really why this whole idea of talking culturally blackness 
and trying to use a DNA test to define that just doesn't mesh well. Right. Thank you. That's, that's, that's a good 20-some percent. Show. You can fall in between I, the 20-some percent. I feel like we got everything else right. Like, I feel like we did it. Oh, God. I guess I kind of disagreed with what our final ranking was. I wanted to switch with Jocelyn because... I just felt it. Uh, the person that stood out to me the most was probably Jocelyn. 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 I'm going to start with Serena, who's not here, but she is in the correct spot. She's at 99.8%. Okay. But I still wonder what is making up that 99.8%. Is North African part of it? What, you know? Oh, wow. 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 So deep. See true blood right there. Then Jocelyn is coming in at 75.8%. <gasps> oh, we were so close. Yeah. That puts her right after Wayne. That means, Jonathan, you're actually second. So I don't, I, listen, Jonathan hasn't messed up. I thought it was interesting, like, she was very confident about it. Yeah, I just think her confidence in the fact of, of, of who she is is really admirable. Okay, that was a pretty interesting video. Not necessarily the greatest for DNA results because they didn't give us any true results. We didn't even know who they tested with. And obviously there was a lot of issues in terms of this idea of culture versus ancestry. But I am happy that I reacted to this video because I was a little worried at first because, you know, a video like this, it's like, I don't know, you know, is there going to be a lot of stuff for me to really talk about if they don't really focus on ancestry? And even though they didn't focus on ancestry as much, it did come up a bit. I think it did bring up a good point about this clash of the idea of culture and how people define themselves and then trying to define ancestry, especially in terms of geographically. And when it comes to American culture and the idea of white and black and brown, and then the idea of ancestry and genealogy and stuff like that, it doesn't fit well because of the nuance of the world. And, you know, like I've said, what do we define as what? You know, who falls into what category? And even these days, people can't agree on that kind of stuff. I feel like we could do a similar video that's, you know, how Jewish are you? And just do percentages of people who are Jewish. But then that's a bigger issue because you could have people who have Mizrahi ancestry and Sephardi ancestry and then people with Ashkenazi ancestry. And the way these tests read these things when it comes to Jewish readings, it's very difficult for them to decipher between the different groups. And so sometimes what does kind of define the different, you know, Sephardi versus Mizrahi versus Ashkenazi it will end up getting lumped in with a bigger or different group. So like for me, a lot of times I'm getting North African readings for my Sephardi, Egyptian readings, Italian readings, Iberian readings, and different things, including Ashkenazi Jewish readings as well. But then if we had all these different people trying to decide, you know, well, who's more Jewish than the other? Well, that's a whole different conversation because now we're talking about it culturally. And the reason I bring up Jewish is because I get comments all the time of, well, you can't read Jewish DNA. It's not an ethnicity. It's a religion. What it really is, this is an ethno religion. It's a people who are genetically tied, but their genetic tie is based around a religion. And so the correlation to black Americans in a sense, African Americans, is that there is a cultural element to it, like it's been discussed extensively in this video, that also ties into the ancestral aspect of it. So it's not quite like, you know, African Americans you can define specifically by DNA. They're not, you know, that takes thousands of years. You know, Jews have been marrying Jews for thousands upon thousands of years. What's known as endogamy when a group largely only marries within its own group but overall like i said i think it was a, a an interesting video to to see and a it's a good conversation piece of this idea of culture and ancestry hopefully you enjoyed this reaction and if you did be sure to check out this other reaction i did right here thank you to my patreon patrons and youtube members